Hello and welcome back to another video today here again on Gran Turismo 7 to kind of give my thoughts and opinions on the game after playing it a little while um, since it came out on the 4th of March. So as we know it has been a very very long awaited game almost uh, as long as well almost as long since the previous game as we've had from Test Drive to Solar Crown which is coming out later this year which is of course very exciting because um, yes the last full Gran Turismo game was Gran Turismo 6 which came out in December 2013 so over eight years ago back on the PlayStation 3 um, the last kind of full game obviously we've had sports since then but that was almost like a prologue to this game so yes I have been playing it since launch but I didn't want to put the video out too long uh, but too soon afterwards um, because I kind of felt like I hadn't played it enough to give a kind of rounded enough view on the game. So I now have over 34 hours of in-game time and have driven for over 7 hours covering over a thousand miles. I have a fairly decent collection of cars, I've spent a lot of time modifying and tuning and doing liveries and things so it kind of felt like it was about time to review the game if you like um, giving my thoughts and opinions after playing it for a number of weeks on streams and in a few videos so i'm going to be splitting this up into parts kicking things off with the customization and tuning So we start with the customization and tuning in Gran Turismo 7 because I think this is probably one of the best things about the game. It's one of the things I've most enjoyed and one of the things most improved over sport and, well, any previous Gran Turismo games, as well as being better than most of the competition, apart from possibly you could argue Need for Speed is better in some areas. So as you saw in the recent video I did, uh, I did a more in-depth video on customization, which you can go and check out if you want to, or I actually go through modifying some cars. Um, but there are incredible levels of customization in this game. There's wide bodies for almost every vehicle. Yes, some of them aren't that extreme, and they're mostly just kind of stretched arches, but the fact it's available for most things is pretty amazing. There's bumper, side skirt, and roll cage options, and there's an amazing custom rear wing system Although that was kind of there in previous games and arguably it was better, but it is still a really cool feature to kind of be able to pick your own wing and end plates and bits and pieces and make a custom wing set for your car. There are also real car paints, which is a feature I absolutely love. It's a tiny little feature um, that you can go in and buy pre-existing car paints. Um, they've actually dropped the amount these cost from 4000 to 3,000 I noticed the other day, but yeah, for 3,000 credits you can buy, well, pretty much any manufacturer colour in existence. Yes, there are a few important ones missing, like Miami Blue, but I love that they've added that feature. It's just a really cool, tiny little detail, uh, and one of the things that makes the customization cooler than it is on most other games. Another thing that does that is, of course, the window stickers, which is something that seems to be beyond most games, even though it's been requested since about the Jurassic era. Um, the Crew 2 seems to have managed it, um, and Need for Speed have managed it. I mean, the, the kind of only big game that hasn't managed it, I suppose, at this point is Forza. And now that Gran Turismo has it as well, um, they're kind of the only people that are falling behind on that front. Um, but it's really cool. Uh, and you can also mirror sponsors from side to side properly. Yeah, it works properly and you can do it side to side on the front and rear bumpers, basically anywhere on the car, not just from left to right, which is really cool. Um, there is a decal uploader, although it's kind of less useful than having a square wheel um, in practice. It's a really cool idea, but it's a complicated way to upload and you have to do it in a certain format. And sometimes when it is in the right format, it doesn't accept it. Sometimes the um, decals go invisible when you try and find them in game sometimes they lose the transparency it's just all a bit of a fiddle and you end up with a, a decal of quite low quality um, without the transparency you want so it's kind of not really worth using although it's a cool idea and I feel like more games should have that kind of option Moving away from the sort of visual stuff towards the tuning I think it has a far better system than sport because you kind of just chose stage one two three or four on sport it was a bit rubbish it was a bit like need for speed tuning um from payback anyway i think it was a bit like that anyway 
It's far better than that. It's got the traditional performance point system, a bit like Forza's performance index system, rather than the stupid one we had in sport, which is quite good. Um, I haven't really played about with it enough to figure out if it's very well balanced or not. Uh, the only thing I've noticed so far is that one all-wheel drive car I tested was far, far faster around a circuit than some rear-wheel drive cars of the same um, performance points. Um, and the final thing is some of the exclusive parts, such as engine swaps, are, are only available through the roulette tickets, which is a bit limiting, and I do keep getting parts on those that are for cars I don't own. Um, I know that's not really to do with the customization and tuning, that's more to do with the prize giving system, but yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about some of the tuning options only being available if you get lucky on the spin. Uh, I kind of feel like that's not really uh, a fair way to do things. Um, but anyway, that is the customization and tuning, which, as you can tell, uh, is one of my favourite things about this game so far. So, secondly, we move on to, well, possibly the most important thing, because if this doesn't feel nice, then the game's kind of ruined. The kind of gameplay and handling of the game and the physics and stuff like that. So the handling and physics, I kind of preferred how the cars behaved in Gran Turismo Sport, if I'm honest. Uh, it is very similar to that, so if you played that game and you haven't picked up GT7 yet, it does feel similar to that. Um, so if you enjoyed that game, you probably will like how this drives. But I find it slightly more difficult to control. I don't know if that's because it's more aimed at steering wheel users than GT Sport was, uh, which I'd find odd because that was Sport, that was supposed to be the competitive game. Um, but on controller, it feels slightly harder to keep the cars under control. They kind of kick the back out more than they did on Sport, they feel less stable. Um, and I've just struggled to kind of get on top of the car as much uh, as I could in Sport. Um, after playing a little bit, it's just kind of each time I load up the game, it takes kind of longer for me to get used to throttle inputs and stuff than uh, it did on Sport. So yeah, I slightly prefer what it was like on there, but it is overall very similar. It's good to see much more aggressive AI, uh, even in the races now. This is before they've added their new ridiculously named Sophie system, um, but the AI are quite aggressive and have well, a, a, almost too aggressive. They bump into you in races and then you lose your clean race bonus. I kind of wish they were fast because they're more competitive than they were in sport, but maybe slightly less aggressive. Um, but yeah, it is a lot of fun on here because you do get much closer racing with the AI than you did in sports, for example, um, which is good because there's a longer kind of more in-depth career mode on here, which is what we're going to move on to next. So, yes, the single-player campaign, um, the next thing we're going to run through here on Gran Turismo 7. It is, of course, bigger and better than it was on Sport. There is rain at launch. Uh, that's not really to do with the campaign, but it, there are rain events in there, which there weren't at the launch of Gran Turismo Sport. Um, yes, it's kind of nowhere near the size of, like, Gran Turismo 4 and stuff like that, which, when this game was being advertised, they were kind of heavily going off the fact it was going to be more like the older games with more to do, more various um, different things, uh, kind of more variety, and it, yeah, it's not as big as your Gran Turismo 4 um, in terms of, well, game size, career mode, or car list, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's not really as big as it could be and as big as it needs to be. Uh, yes, in these days you can update the game, so they will add more content. Um, but a lot of people have finished the main kind of part of the game already. I'm kind of lasting it out by only playing it on streams once or twice a week. Um, but yeah, a lot of people have finished the main campaign, um, which isn't really big enough, to be honest. Gran Turismo 4, for example, would have taken months, um, even if you were playing it pretty much every day. Um, so yeah, it's not kind of up to the standard of the older games, but it is a huge improvement over sport. Um, so if you enjoyed sport, it's kind of like that, but bigger and better with um, more challenging AI. And as for the license tests, which is always a big part of the Gran Turismo single player experience, they are more difficult than they were on sport, but kind of not as hard as they should be. Um, they get increasingly harder as you go on, and I haven't got onto the final 
um, licenses yet. Um, so yeah, we'll find out. But at the beginning, it, yes, they're challenging. Some of them take a few attempts because I'm kind of not concentrating all the time, um, particularly on them. But they are, in the end, easier than they were back on the games of old, which maybe isn't a bad thing. Some of those are maybe a bit tough. But they're definitely more challenging than sport, and again, it's a welcome improvement over that game, but it's not quite where the old games were. Although maybe these days you can't quite make things as difficult as you did back then, because people don't seem to be as tough when it comes to that sort of thing. They want a nice, easy game. Um, but anyway, they do get tougher as you go through, so I can't wait to try some of the more challenging ones. I've heard the final um, license test. Uh, in your sort of highest license, which I think is a super license, is a particularly challenging one. As for the line on the game, it's kind of very, very similar to sport. You've got three daily races which change every week, so they're kind of weekly races. Um, but in some of them now, you can build your own car. So if anyone played sport, you'll know it was kind of balance of performance for you so you'd pick a car and it would kind of balance it um, a lot of them were gt3 and gt4 races or it would be in a stock something or other um, but now some of them allow you to build your own car uh, and the balancing is a bit questionable or it certainly was in the first week or two from what i heard um, some of these hybrid powered vehicles um, had like a KERS system that wasn't accounted for in the performance point number um, but it meant if you deployed it on the straight you were just faster than everyone on the straight so these ridiculous hideous Peugeot things were winning everything um, I think they're Vision Gran Turismo cars um, so yeah potentially there will be a problem like that or people will get round the, the system and with a competitive online racing kind of setup on here um, rather than your sort of casual racing that you get on games like Forza and stuff. This is much more competitive and you're ranked, so it kind of feels a little bit unfair if some cars are overpowered like that, but you find that problem in any game where you try to balance pretty much every car in the game for racing uh, with multiple, because the upgrades are so complex, it's kind of difficult to make it perfect, um, but it definitely needs working on. As well as competitive racing, there are lobbies they return, uh, as well as meeting places. Um, but uh, on a stream recently I tried to go into these and they were completely deserted, there was nobody in either of those. So they're kind of irrelevant, there's no point trying to go into lobbies and meeting places. The only place you can really go online is in the competitive racing, from what I found, if you want any other cars to be there, or more than two cars to be there. Um, because nobody seems to really use the others. Um, the fact the game has to be online all of the time to function is a mistake. Um, this was on Sports as well, and I can't think why they really did it. Their excuse is that it stops people cheating because you can't go offline and do some clever workaround thing, but it's just rubbish. The only thing you could do offline is the music rally, um, which you'd think would be fine because you're online everybody's online all the time now um, but the servers were down for a couple of days uh, quite near launch and well that kind of highlighted the problem with being online all the time uh, if the servers are down you can't play the game at all which is a bit rubbish because normally on most games you can still go in and play the campaign on here you can't play it at all well you can go and do music rally but that's not really worth doing and from my point of view for recording that doesn't work because it's got music in it um, <laughs> and YouTube don't like you using music because they give you copyright warnings and things anyway yeah that was not a good start because they were out for an update for it, basically some bug came up in an update and they had to release a new update but in the time it took to do that we were all stuck not being able to play and when a game is one or two weeks old, I think it was at this point. Um, that, that's not good if you've got your brand new game that you've potentially pre-ordered and it doesn't work. Uh, although having said that, they did compensate us by giving us um, a million credits, which is a kind of nice gesture, but point is we shouldn't have run into that problem in the first place and we wouldn't have done if the game wasn't always online. 
As for how the game looks visually, it is stunning. It's the best looking game I've ever played, um, um, I think. Like, that's saying a lot, but it is stunning. Gran Turismo have always been very good visually for, well, whenever their game came out, they've always been ahead of their time with visuals. Uh, although YouTube compression would probably lead you a lot to believe otherwise if you've watched any of the live streams. Because um, it doesn't deal with the kind of lighting from this game very well. It kind of just makes it go all fuzzy. Um, but on screen for me, it is very, very good. And I'm not even on a PS5. I'm on an original PlayStation 4 here. Um, and it's still stunning. So I can't think how good this must look on a PS5 at 4K resolution uh, or whatever they do, or with ray tracing and stuff like that. It must look absolutely incredible. So yeah, in terms of visuals, it's absolutely stunning. Couldn't be better. Next up, let's take a quick look at the car list, um, which is obviously an important part of any driving and racing game. Uh, there are some great new and returning cars in the game, uh, which is really nice to see. Uh, all but two cars have carried over from Sport, which is better than Forza Managed, um, where they take millions of cars out and then reintroduce them as if they're new. Um, but having said that, there's still not really enough cars in here. Nowhere near the size of car lists that we got in old games like Gran Turismo 4. Um, we can't necessarily expect them to do that, but Given how long ago that game came out, I don't see why they can't add a little bit more. Yes, the cars are more complex models now. They take time to do, and anything that needs... Well, anything that they wanted to carry forward would kind of need redoing um, from games that old anyway. Um, but yeah, we kind of expected this number, but it would still be nice to have more, which obviously will be added in updates. One big feature they added in terms of cars was the used car dealer, which is great to see again, but as with a lot of the rest of the game, they're kind of trying to make it like the games of old, but not doing it quite as well. So I don't like the system of the new used car dealer. I liked how it was on, well, for example, Gran Turismo 4, where it would update frequently and be different on different people's games. It would be quite random. Although on here, it seems to just follow a pattern and when you buy a car, it's not sold, it's still there. There's like a certain quantity of each car, and once they've been bought by people all around the world, um, that number, they then disappear. But it's a bit odd, because you end up with effectively 100,000, say, I don't know how many are actually in there, of exactly the same used car in a dealership. It just doesn't really make sense, and it doesn't update frequently enough. So, yeah, it's a bit weird, and some of the cars they put in there are a bit odd choices because it's really supposed to be the older stuff, whereas some of the stuff you can buy at Brand Central seems to be in there quite frequently. So yeah, I much preferred that old system, but we've got a used car dealer, which is very nice to see return. Um, and I do like how the expensive and exclusive cars are bought through the antique dealership, although the problem with this is they don't come up very often, they're very expensive, and money is quite hard to come by in this game. Same thing for if you're invited to go and buy a, a special car from Brand Central. You kind of get an invite. I don't know how long they last for. Um, but you have to buy it during that time. And credits are quite hard to come by in this game. Um, which makes people do microtransactions. Which is what we'll get onto next. Um, the economy of Gran Turismo 7. Um, which isn't really a very good point to finish up on. Because, well, you'll see. It's not uh, a great system. Yes, are very difficult to come by on here. Uh, you don't earn a lot from racing, you can put in a lot of time, you don't earn a lot. Um, although there's more stuff to buy, there's lots of expensive cars in the antique dealer that are at limited time, the used car dealer's limited time, um, invites to buy some of the expensive cars from dealerships at limited time. So it, you kind of get all of these options of things to buy and there's no way you could ever really uh, be expected to afford all the stuff that's available at any one time before it changes to the next thing. So yeah, it's hard to get money and there's more to spend it on than there was in sports, so overall the economy doesn't work very well. Uh, and yeah, to be able to afford all the stuff that's available, the kind of exclusive stuff that will soon disappear, 
you have to buy it. And as with sport, it has the same microtransaction system where effectively you can buy credits. You can buy as many credits as you want, or you can buy any cars you want with real money directly, which is not a good way to do it. Uh, if you're going to have paid stuff, have some content that is paid for. Don't make us pay for credits. That's kind of what um, it's kind of what GTA do, and that's really not a good model to use for microtransactions. Uh, you know, admittedly, a lot of games do this. The crew does it. Um, but one of the few people who haven't done it yet, Forza, actually. So, well, good for them. But um, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, especially when money is hard to come by and everything's expensive, it kind of encourages people to do that. Um, but yeah, having said all of that, uh, a lot of people have expressed their concerns with this, and, well, Gran Turismo have said they're going to fix it, basically, because they've not had a good start. A lot of people have complained about that, uh, credits and microtransactions, and the general broken economy of the game, and with their outage as well, they've had quite a lot of complaints, but they are dealing with it, it seems, um, better than most games seem to. Most games seem to ignore your concerns, but it does seem they're listening. Uh, they are going to update the game, uh, and in the next update they are going to rebalance the economy to address people's concerns. So for the later races in the game, prize money is going to increase by an average of 100% for the kind of later races, so it's doubling which is good for the races that already earned us more. They were the better earning races in the games. And there's increased prize for circuit experience, which is good because that's a very challenging part of the game. So people were spending a long time on that and then not earning very much. Luckily, I haven't done much of that yet, so I'll do it after the economy has been fixed. And yeah, it shows they are at least listening to the community and some of the concerns people have, particularly regarding the money and, well, they gave us a million credits uh, for being offline for a couple of days, which was generous, but it, we shouldn't have been stuck not being able to play. So that's one thing that does need addressing, they're being online all the time, although I don't think they're going to change that. So all I can say is be careful with your updates and make sure the servers are always working, because otherwise we can't play at all. But yeah, it is good to know they're listening to us, good to know things are changing in updates, and, well, we're going to be getting new cars and tracks and things as well in updates, which Gran Turismo did very well with Sport, um, starting with quite big updates with quite a lot of cars and a couple of circuits. Yes, they kind of tailed off a bit towards the end, but that is to be expected from most games. Yeah, so far it's been a fantastic game, although I complained quite a bit in this. Um, there are things I love. The tuning and customization is good. Single-player campaign, although smaller than older games, is still an improvement. Difficulties and improvement over sport. Handling, I'm not quite sure about. Um, and yeah, online is similar experience to sport and is quite fun. So yeah, I am still very much enjoying this game and can't wait to see what comes in future updates. Um, but yeah, that is going to be all for my kind of thoughts and opinions on Gran Turismo 7 in this kind of review style video, if you like. Um, do let me know if you enjoy this style video. I did a similar one on Horizon 5 not long after that came out because I'd love to do a video like this on Solar Crown once that is out, once I feel I've played it enough to give you guys um, a good overall uh, opinions on the game. Um, but for now that is going to be all, do let me know if you've enjoyed this style of video, um, but otherwise thank you very much for watching and I'll be back with the next video very soon.